Happy Friday and happy Fridays with Feitelman. Today's topic on Fridays with Feitelman is love is peace and nothingness. Happy Valentine's Day 2020. I'm Cheryl Feitelman. I'm a life coach with a focus on trauma healing and I've developed my trauma healing attunement practice where I train my clients to heal trauma from their nervous system. And I believe that unhealed trauma steals the potential of our life and that codependence is the most obvious way in which we demonstrate our unhealed trauma in relationship with others and in relationship with ourselves. So it's Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day, for those that observe it and potentially for those that don't observe it, I think that Valentine's Day isn't just an opportunity to celebrate and acknowledge love for an intimate partner. It's a way to celebrate and acknowledge love in general. Most importantly, and always the love for yourself. Because even if you're in relationship, the love for yourself comes first. Even if you're in relationship with another person, and we are always, constantly, no matter what, every single moment, every single second, of the day, of the evening, of the morning, we are in relationship with ourselves. And when we are in partnership with another person, I think the highest and best opportunity of being in relationship with another person is the opportunity to learn about ourselves. And in any relationship, again, with another person or with ourselves, I think it's always the greatest gift to give yourself and or another person, give them the gift of never really landing in knowing, right? Like you're always getting to know yourself and you're always getting to know somebody else. And this goes back to a video that I put out a while ago about isness, right? Like we think this person is this way or I am this way. We are always moving, evolving, growing, and changing. So once we think this person is this way and we're relating to them as if they are that way, like they're not a moving image, then we think we know and we can't sort of hang in the not knowing. It's like giving somebody the gift of seeing them as constantly growing and morphing. And giving ourselves the gift of seeing ourselves as constantly growing and morphing. Now, the reason why I point to love is nothingness in the, in the title of this video is because the greatest access to experiencing love is actually being able to sit in nothingness. Now, if you're in a relationship and there's things you've swept under the carpet, there's things you're overlooking, there's things you're ignoring. That's not being in relationship with somebody where there's nothing in between you. When there's nothing, what can fill the space is everything. And I know that sounds cliche, right? Like, you know, love is nothing and love is everything. Well, what is everything? It's a great question. What is everything? So I'm going to look at everything as light and beauty and growth and transformation. Okay. When there's something in the space, things can't grow. Like for example, if you plant, um, um, I like to garden. So if you're planting vegetables or you're planting, planting flowers, or if you're planting a tree or a bush, If you put the roots in the ground and then you put rocks in between the roots, it can't grow. Actually, those roots need space in the dirt. Some of them actually need, like the directions will say, six inches between plants or 12 inches between plants because things need space. They need openness. They need breath. They need room to to sprout, okay? If you have things in the space of your relationships, things in your relationship, things that you're ignoring or resisting, or you think things are much more peaceful if we don't actually talk about that thing, that peace is an illusion. Oops, sorry. The light is going out. We wanna make sure that the peace we're experiencing isn't an illusion. 
that it's actual peace, that it's, it's peace because we've taken the time to excavate the things that are in the way of our fullest expression. And when I say fullest expression, that also goes to my point of like, or like the, the cliche, nothing and everything, right? Because everything also means sadness, it means anger, it means frustration, it means not feeling safe. So if you are living in an illusion of peace with somebody else and most importantly with yourself, it's an illusion of peace because you don't want to face the thing that's really there under the carpet because you don't want to feel the anger. You don't want to feel the disappointment. You don't want to experience confrontation. You don't want to experience uh, what could potentially feel like the loss of a relationship or the loss of some you know, ideal thing that you think you're working towards. And if you face the thing that's under the carpet, maybe you won't be able to attain the, this ideal thing. Well, everything is the fullest expression of, 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 of everything that you're feeling, everything that's in your body, everything that's in your mind, your interpretations, your projections. Now, when people sweep things under the carpet because they think I don't want confrontation and I actually don't know how to communicate the things that are in my way. So if they come out, they'll just come out as like, you know, like a, like a, like a passion puke or like a rage puke and that's not going to get us anywhere. Well, certainly we want to be responsible for how we're communicating. We wanna be responsible for not hurting ourselves or hurting others. And there's a way in which we can set the stage, communicate with another person, communicate with ourselves, digest the feelings and emotions in a very healthy way so that when the communication comes out, there's regulation in your body when you're speaking it. There's a siren going, so just gonna hold on for a second. I live two blocks from a from a firehouse. Um, so love, when I say love is peace, love is not the illusion of peace. Love is actual peace, particularly in relationship with yourself. There's things you want to create. There's things you want to obtain. There's there's like, sorry, I'm gonna wait for that siren again. There's projects that you want to complete. There's the person that you think that you ultimately are, or you don't know who you ultimately are. You don't know who the truest expression of yourself is, but you're pretty clear that what you're doing and how you're operating isn't the truest expression of yourself. And so what is in the way of that for some people is a lot of like um, limiting beliefs, being angry at yourself, being rageful at yourself, resenting yourself because you haven't done the thing yet that you want to do, or you wasted X amount of time because you've been in hiding um, as a codependent, you've been in hiding as somebody who doesn't feel valuable, you've been in hiding in relationships that aren't healthy or in jobs that aren't healthy, you've been in hiding. You've been waiting, holding out, hoping that somebody will give you the permission to live the life that you want to lead. That is not having peace within yourself. It could, the illusion of peace within yourself is like, well, I have a decent job, I'm paying my bills, everything is fine. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm ignoring, that I want, things that I want, tangible things, but also things that I wanna feel. Like excited, like focused and motivated and building and creating. And I don't feel all those things. I'm not experiencing all those things. And I'm willing to ignore it. I'm willing to move along in the illusion of peace because everything's relatively fine. So just to throw out a little game or a question here, I like to throw out um, questions uh, so that you guys can write to me and let me know if there's something that this is sparking with you. Is there anywhere in your life where you have the illusion of peace? but you know that there's something there that if you opened up that door, you can say, actually, I'm saying that there's peace here because there's, the, there's like a status quo, but really like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's locked away, that's locked into hiding, that I know if I open up that door and I start to investigate 
things that I've repressed, possibly this illusion of peace is going to go away. I'm going to lose hold of what I think is like control over my life. And I'm, un, I don't, I'm keeping this stuff hot, hidden away because I don't want to lose the control. I don't want to lose the status quo inner peace. And there's a whole bunch of like, there's a whole bunch of stuff in that closet that if I open up, I will see feelings, I'll see emotions, I'll see things that I've ignored. That is everything. And once you ex excavate that, there's nothing in the space anymore. And then you can be at nothing and actually live in what is a true expression of peace, which is I say is which is what I say is nothingness. And sometimes to get to nothingness, <clears throat> you have to confront. You have to argue. You have to feel. And it doesn't always have to be like crappy feelings. It could be super happy, elated feelings as well. Some people avoid feeling super excited and super elated and super in love because, they, because they're afraid of that's like an illusion, like having some high or manic feeling is, is an illusion. Or if I let myself go that high, that means that there's too far to drop once I'm disappointed. So I'm going to stay in some monotone version of life. What would you have to expose to yourself and or to another person to actually move through everything and actually get to nothing? What would you have to expose? What would you have to admit is there in the space that you're ignoring? What would you have to potentially be willing to lose? And you know, we always think that the losing is another person. I'm gonna lose uh, my partner, or I'm gonna lose my job, right? I'm gonna lose something external to myself. Most importantly, always, it's the relationship with yourself. And potentially, what you're gonna lose is the illusion of safety that you have. You're going to lose the illusion of comfort. Potentially what you're going to lose is the comfort and habit of being in a medium vibration of life. Potentially, oh wait, this is good. I have this thought that's like, warming right now. Potentially what you are going to lose is a consistent, um, a consistent regressive state. Okay. And I always say that unhealed trauma is regressive. When we're looking for safety in another person, when we're looking for safety in a job, we're reaching and longing for safety outside of us, which is a regressive habit. That's what we did when we were children. We looked for safety and protection um, and, and like figuring out what's real. Where can I land here? Who's going to see me? Where can I be vulnerable? I'm not quite sure. All of those questions are regressive questions. How many relationships do you have, intimate or otherwise, where, where there's just stuff swept under the rug? Maybe you don't even talk to the person anymore and you just don't want to face why or you don't want to face them and tell them why. Tell yourself why. I didn't feel safe in that relationship. My trust was broken. Um, I projected my needs onto them. I needed them to provide something specific for me and they didn't provide it for me. We want to keep looking at how we can take responsibility for our, for our lives and how we move through life. And since I focus on codependence, um, a lot of uh, what I work with are people who, who attract narcissists, right? So when the codependent has what I've always say, three pillars of codependence, the want to be wanted, the need to be needed, and or the need to prove oneself. When a codependent attracts a narcissist, 
and they and it's it you're you're hooked in a pattern of whatever you need i will provide it because i'm the one who needs to be needed then you are consistently in a regressive state and it's hard to look at it and take responsibility because it's like the word narcissist is such a huge like intense word and i don't like to look at it as as narcissistic personality disorder because i'm a life coach and i'm not a mental health profession professional and i believe that we all have narcissistic traits on some level um so you know and also referring to the video i put out last time which is that codependence on some level has narcissistic traits because we're projecting our needs and our wants onto somebody else and we're hoping that they want us in the way that we want us and we'll like move and contort in order for us to have the experience of feeling wanted so codependence is also a way of projecting our needs and wants and having those needs and wants rule the relationship like we're projecting our own reality into a relationship i'm digressing a little bit and i'm still pointing to regressive states codependence is a regressive state which is the demonstration of our unhealed trauma from our childhood. And when we put things under the rug because we want to stay in this illusion of peace, that is also a regressive act. Because when we were children, we had narcissistic parents or we had, um, you know, there's, there's covert trauma that was just super obvious events or a s event or a series of events. I'm sorry overt trauma super obvious events or a series of events and then there's covert trauma where we just slowly over time were not recognized as children slowly over time our parents were in their own reality not noticing ours and we weren't able to say, we didn't yet have our voice developed to the extent where we can say, hey, mom, dad, and or guardian, can you notice me? Hey, mom, dad, or guardian, I don't feel safe here. Is there something we can do about this? Or you said this thing to me and it really hurt my feelings and I would like you to hear me and listen to my feelings. Or I would like you to not do that thing again that hurt. Or I'm actually really not comfortable in this household. I would like to leave, please. We don't have the voice to say that. And for a lot of us, if we ever did say it, then it got us in even more trouble. So sweeping things under the carpet, living in an illusion of peace is also a regressive act. It's a regressive survival technique. Uh, you know, um, just a quick example from my own life when uh you know my mom uh my childhood was just a big domestic violence scene and it was my mom who abused my dad my dad left when i was six because she almost killed him um and i i think i've explained that described that story uh several times and i'll go into it again at some point but for the sake of time um he left because his life was in danger and he would always ask me when he left how's everything going at home and i would say everything is fine now that totally wasn't true because what my mom did to my dad when he left my brother and i were the target you know it was us that got that kind of domestic abuse uh minus the you know the sure there was a category of sexual abuse that happened with my well i'm not, I'm not sure i know that there was, there was also sexual abuse with my mom and my father. But so minus the sexual stuff, my mother abused my brother and I very similarly to the way she abused my dad. So he was out of the picture, it turned on us. I always told my, my dad was always like, how's it going at home, how's it going at home, how's it going at home? And I was always like, it's fine. Everything's fine, everything's fine. And when I turned uh, 17 or 18 and I was going away to college, uh, or, or like, I remember on the, I remember I went away to college and I was failing. Like I was doing horribly my first year and I wanted to go back. And my dad was like, why do you want to go back? You're, you're doing really bad. You're failing. And I said, there's no way that I'm going to go home 
to mom, you can't pay me enough. And, and he said, why not? And I, and I was like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a horrific scene there and I'm done with her. And he said, I, I don't understand. You've been telling me your whole life that everything was fine. And now 10, 11 years later, you don't even want to go back there. So I had some resentment over my life with my dad. Like, how could you leave us with our mom? And at the same time, in his mind, he was like, oh, you've been telling me everything's cool. How, how, you know, how would I know that? Another layer of it is that I wanted him to know anyway, even though I was lying to him and telling him everything was fine. Um, that's another piece of my, of my trauma. Um, and I just kept giving the illusion that everything was fine. That is the illusion of peace that we take into our lives that is part of our unhealed trauma. And there's so much protection there, right? Like I was protecting my mom, I was protecting us, because what if my dad knew everything wasn't fine and he would take us out of the house or so much protection, right? So much keeping, like, like telling him everything was fine was an act of keeping everything copacetic and being in control of everything. And just, you know, like not, not um, you know, just not uh, creating any fires anywhere. And it was an illusion. I was lying. And everything was cool, right? Like I had everything handled at home. I could deal with the abuse. I had figured out how to survive it. Um, and we had fun moments. And that's the other thing when there is an illusion of peace, it's like, well, you know, there's good moments. There's good times. I have good times in my relationship. I have good times in my relationship with myself. I have good times at my job. Everything's cool. I can handle it. I'll stay in the illusion of peace. And just keep ignoring everything that I've swept under the rug and ignoring the parts of myself that are in continual contraction of holding this stuff under the rug because I'm used to it. I'm used to the holding. I'm used to the ignoring that stuff. I'm used to it. I'm cool. That's the illusion of peace. And what is on the other side of trauma healing, what is on the other side of letting go all of the stuff that you are holding on to, you don't even kind of feel it anymore because you're so used to just holding it in a secret box. On the other side of releasing, examining, communicating all of that stuff, of course, moving through it may be difficult. What's on the other side of that is nothingness. The strength, power, clarity, space to grow and sprout with absolutely nothing impeding your expansion. So um, those are all my thoughts. I wanted to read a poem um, today because it's Valentine's Day and I think, and, and just to bring back the purity and innocence that is, that is intrinsic in true peace and nothingness and love for another person, and most importantly, for yourself. Here's the poem. It's called, um, I might not be looking at you because I'm, I'm also reading this poem. So the poem is called Cows Grazing. This is actually my first and only children's poem that I've ever written. Look at all the cows grazing with no comparative thoughts, like her spots are bigger than my spots. My udders or are more saggy. My udders are more saggy than her udders. Look at all the cows grazing with no thoughts of their body image or how they're gonna attract the bull. I'm prettier than her, that bull wants her, not me. Look at all the cows grazing, with no thoughts of how much money they make or where grass comes from, with no thoughts of how smart they are or, or what they forgot to do today. Just grass, just eating grass. I would like to eat grass. Look at all the cows grazing with no thoughts of I, 
I am cow. I am pooping. I will poop here. Out in the open for all my suitors to see, I will poop here. Look at all the cows grazing with no thoughts of I. I could be afraid. I can defend. I can feed my calf out in the open amongst my community. Hmm, I wonder how much time I have left here to graze. Nope, just pooping. Look at all the cows grazing. Thanks for listening to my poetry. Thanks for listening to this video. I've created a, 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 a mantra for my work. Um, I've created like a mission and I wanna share that with you. Training codependent people to heal their own trauma with my attunement practice so that they can come out of hiding and return to who they were born to be is what I do. Standing for the eradication of trauma from the human condition by healing one nervous system at a time is who I am. All right, happy Valentine's Day. I have a Valentine's Day special. The link is in the email that you received and it's also uh, in the description of this vi YouTube video. So it's, um, you get two summits, my two summits from 2019. Uh, the first one is trust yourself, transform your codependence. Uh, the second one is trust yourself again, heal your trauma and be the real you in sex, family and money. It's 34 interviews plus a, uh, uh, trauma healing attunement ses session where we'll really, uh, really start the ball rolling, seeing what state your nervous system is in as a result of your unhealed trauma. It's $97 for the next 48 hours uh, until Sunday evening, midnight Pacific time. So go ahead and um, you have unlimited access, lifetime access to 34 interviews. Um, and when you book uh, within 24 hours, you'll get the summit um, uh, links and passcodes, and then you'll get the booking link to book your session. All right, everybody. A couple of things. Be awesome on purpose. Life is now. Happy Valentine's Day. Love is peace and nothingness with other people and most importantly, first and foremost, with yourself. Happy healing. Have an awesome weekend. Bye, everybody. I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Bye. Lots of love.